George Estefan. My name is Knight. Uh, I'm Law. And our company is uh, Freshly Local. So, first of all, like, imagine that you're walking in the downtown Bridge Park, and like, yeah, or you get out from your work, or you live there. So, uh, and you're looking for a healthy food, and you can't you can get it very fast. Um, uh, so, there is no, no place. Uh, personally, I live there, so when I want to get like a healthy food, I, I have to use my car so, to get the healthy food. So, that's why we came up with this idea. Um, and uh, the freshly local is uh, our uh, like our very healthy fast uh, food restaurant. Since the problem is that some people want fresh and healthy food, organic, so we come <coughs> with the, we're gonna provide them a healthy and organic food, and we're gonna we are going to make sure that it's 100% healthy. The vegetables, beef, chicken, the bread. Uh, it's gonna be fast. Fresh uh, and ready to go. So this is our uh, break-even calculation, and uh, our total fixed costs come out to be about one hundred and four thousand dollars. And we need to sell about thirteen thousand seven hundred and seventy-five units in order to break even. Each unit costs about three dollars and forty-five cents to make, and we're gonna, we decided to sell them at eleven dollars per unit in order to break even. And we got this calculation, we got the uh, price per, price cost per unit by doing research, contacting local farm sources, contacting uh, farmers markets to see what everything, <coughs> what it takes in order to make that sandwich piece by piece. These are our projected financials. In the first year, uh, we have 15,000 units that are going to be sold, which brings in about 165,000 in revenue. Our cost of goods sold are 51,750. Our profit is 113,250, and our overhead is 104,000, which brings us to a positive of 9,250. As the years progress, we use the margin of 110% increase per year. And the reason for doing so is that Bridgeport is still expanding and it's still growing. We have a new, uh, it's being reno renovated, it's gonna have more housing units. They're thinking about putting a casino down here in downtown Bridgeport. And the thing that separates us from majority of the competition is the location that we picked. It's right in the center of the train station, the colleges, the courthouses, and the small businesses and large businesses all throughout Bridgeport. Uh, and that's why we said Bridgeport. So if you can see here, so the first column is one mile, and the second one's three miles and five miles. I can't see it there. So we are focusing on this sir. So if you can see the transportation to work, so these numbers tell you how many people there drive, walk, to work, and around that area. So that basically from 2010, and obviously when 2018 probably is going to be more than that. So that basically what talks you know, all about that area. Um, so this is like we offer like sandwiches, salad, <laughs> and uh, special from Mama Hummus. Okay. <laughs> um, like this is the, like a part of our menu, and our menu is like a custom uh, customizable. Um, and thank you. So I would have started with this picture right after your uh, subway picture because you, I was probably two minutes into it thinking, well, what is, what am I getting for eleven dollars? Because you talked about it very CPA. I was a CPA in my first life, so I liked the numbers; those were good and interesting. But I kind of think, what am I getting for eleven dollars? And it wasn't until I think you threw out the word sandwich, and I said, oh, okay, so for eleven bucks, I'm getting a sandwich, and now I'm seeing this. And this looks a lot more like something I might pay eleven dollars for than, yeah. than just a better uh, uh, subway. You might want to think back to what Drew said to the last team about what, how do you get started? Maybe a food truck, maybe catering. Do something else to see are those three things or whatever it is that the menu is going to be. Are they convincing enough to people to pay that price point? Right. So before you invest in the overhead of a, of a fixed brick and mortar location, test out. One of your big 
unknowns, which is do people really want grandma's homemade hummus? And do they think of grandma's homemade hummus as organic and healthy, or do they think of it as something else, right? So you need to prove that the way you prepare it gives that connotation that you want a fast uh, Best food joy the serving healthy food. Yeah, yeah, your three Fs. I just don't remember the, 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 the three Fs. Uh, so I think that, that that would be another uh, recommendation is start out first proving that this, um, we had a competition before with people who were doing hydroponics. And they said people hear hydroponics and they think genetically engineered and they think bad. So you guys want to tease out how much, how important is it that healthy versus organic, because they're not the same, right? I, I, I might just want healthier food. I don't really care that it was grown like it was in the 1800s. I, I don't mind that they use modern farming techniques. I just want it to be healthy. So layering in, where do you guys draw that distinction first before then investing in a, a location and staff and, and all that? I think that's something you could do out of your dorm rooms or apartment to figure yes. that out um, and then, then go from there. Uh, but your financial projections, that was a lot of good, nice detail uh, uh, in there. Yeah, I do have a question about the financials. Um, you did show a ramp up and you were pointing out that you are increasing your cost of goods sold based on the ramp up you expect in, in volume and sales. But what about your other costs? I, I, you know, as, have you, uh, do you have any kind of cushion built into your profit margin to adjust for some additional unexpected costs that may occur as you ramp up? Because I noticed that your fixed costs are basically the same. That's probably not reasonable. For instance, you're going to have to hire more staff. You might have to expand the footprint. Is it eat in or is it all just walk, you know, come in and pick up? Um, how are you going to accommodate that additional traffic if you ramp to that? I mean, you're talking almost doubling your amount of sales. Yeah. Is your, what, what are some of the contingencies you may have to allow for for that expansion? Uh, increasing staff, like you said. But, that, but the financials that. did not reflect yeah, that. Yeah, they didn't. We have to incorporate that. We did more of a rough draft on the financials with uh, the core things that we were going to deal with with the business. We didn't break it down into uh, potential future hirings, you know, <coughs> emergencies in the building or something like that. And we didn't account for that yet, no. So go back to your financials just for a second. Either, either one of them, it doesn't matter. Right, well, actually, there. Stop there. Here? No, no, the, that one. Good. So, um, one of the, and this is for everybody because I didn't think to say this last night, but um, if you go to um, a website, franchise.com, you can find information about franchises of all kinds. So you could look at fast food or sandwich shop restaurants and in the franchise agreements, and you might be able also to go to places like Subway where they, they'll have a link for franchises and they will tell you what you can expect. Uh, my guess is that your your gross revenue there at 241 at the last, you should do that in your first six months in a place that has a roughly 1,000 square foot footprint. A, a subway, I'm pretty sure, is going to, if you break, you, well, they're looking at maybe $750,000 a year in sales by the second year. Um, that, that's a, I know pizza restaurants here that have a sit-down component that's somewhere between 25 and 40 percent of the sales, you should be looking at a million five a year by your third year. So these are way too conservative. If you don't, can't make that money, you shouldn't do this business. Yeah. But you can go find these numbers by looking at what franchises offer. All franchises by law have to have something that's called a, a uniform disclosure agreement. It's, that's not literally what it's called. but. Uh, you, they may charge you for it, 50 or 100 bucks, but if you were really thinking about doing this, it would be well worth your while to get those uniform disclosure agreements from two or three model like Subway and Cuisinos and, and some of those places to see what their projections are, what their costs are, what their structure is. And by the way, those are useful information should you ever decide to franchise yourself. They, they're model documents for your own thing. But a couple hundred bucks spent, if you're really thinking about doing this, is a drop in the bucket. Uh, to know that you're getting getting where you're going with that. So go look. Franchise.com is one place. There are a couple of different places where people list franchises, and you can go get a lot of information there for free. And if you need more information, so, you know, 
ask for the information. They may or may not charge you 50 to to $100 for that. As an interesting point, uh, I was just had uh, lunch with the guy who owns the Chick-fil-A in Wallingford. 120 cars an hour between 11 and 2, and another 120 cars an hour between 4 and 6. <laughs> so, I think this is something with, uh, what you were first saying about how we would do customers want this product, are they willing to pay the price for that product. We had a survey that we had built. We couldn't get it out to enough people, but I'm going to continue working on this even after this. Mm -hmm. So the feedback is appreciated. And um, on that survey, use pictures. When it comes to food, don't use words. Use pictures. Use words. pictures That's and have them point. say, uh, please show me. Here's three pictures, like show a Subway sandwich, a Burger King burger, and your thing, and say which of these three to you appears to be the healthier choice. Do things like that to get people to kind of visualize what you want to do, get the mouth watering, or you know, uh, as opposed to words, which are harder for me to make a, a give you good feedback. Yeah. Sorry. There's a um, place downtown in the, in the Reese Building that's a was a restaurant and kitchen that's hardly ever used. It's, it's used as a nonprofit to teach children how to bake bread. So you might be able to rent that like mm -hmm. one day a week uh, or just for lunch to try out your idea for that, that point to get really hard research that would give you and perhaps investors or banks the confidence to invest in the business. You can say, well, we tried this out on a limited basis and yeah, we sold. Uh, an average of a thousand a, a week, and we're already making money. Now we'd like to do this. So, like, let the product speak for itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. First uh, gr gourmet grilled cheese sandwich business in the state. Mm -hmm. Did Started things like trend. go to the Durham Fair and rent a booth, and went to three or four of those kinds of town fairs, and they had enough data that when they went to raise money, it was easy for them to raise money because they had hard data and they showed that people would pay seven bucks for a grilled cheese sandwich. Started by four students from Yale four years ago. Yeah. So, all right. uh, I can just also validate what uh, Dale and Drew said about the uh, revenue target. The Chick-fil-A in Brookfield, I know the franchise owner very well, she did 3.6 million her first year as the first open freestanding Chick-fil-A in the state in wow. Brookfield, which is a really small town. 3.6 million the first year. Wow. So,